Hi everyone, in this tutorial we will learn some of the basics of the Smart Weather Insurmetry nodes, some of their main parameters and a few tips as well. So let's start explaining a bit the different asset types that are given. In the Smart Weathering Asset Pack you will find the assets divided in these categories here. Objects will contain the main effect generator such as snow, weather drops, dust and fire. These assets are objects themselves and that is why they are in this category. An important thing to know is that these effects are independent of the smart weathering shader. However, the fire effect, for example, can be connected to the smart weathering shader. But that is an advanced setup that we will explain in other videos. Now, node groups are what we call helpers. And these are utilities that need to be added to existing objects. In this first asset pack there is only a single one and it is related to the fire effect. And the last category are materials. This category contains all the materials that the geometry nodes uses to create the effects. These materials are already added to the geometry node setups but they are placed here for your convenience if you want to reuse them in your scene. Now considering this we can now start explaining how to use them. Here is a very simple scene setup that will help us explain the key concept of them. Here we have a Susan, the monkey head and a banana for scale reference. And the first thing you need to know is that before start using these assets, you will need to do a little scene preparation. What you will need to do is to place the objects that you want to spawn the effect from in a single collection. There are some more advanced tips to set these in the most optimized way and you will see them in more advanced videos and in our documentation but for now let's just place the Suzanne into this collection that I named as my collection and we can say that the scene is ready to start adding the geometry nodes effects. So you will need to just click on the object category where the main effects are and I will just drag and drop, in this case the water drop effect, and place it into my scene. This object can be anywhere, but the important thing is that this object must not be in the same collection that we were used as the spawn or base collection as we call it. What I will do is just move it out of this collection and we can say that now this scene is prepared. Now with this object selected, the next thing to do is to go to the modifiers tab and see the geometry nodes parameters that we will need to set up. So what I will do is to add this collection into this parameter called base collection. If I do this in this setup, you will notice that the effect is created but the water drops are very small. However, the thing is that this default monkey head is extremely big and that is why we have the banana for the scale reference. This dimension concept is especially important when using the smart weathering geometry nouns, not only because they will make the effect look out of scale, but because they will also require much more computing power in some scenarios like this one. So what I will do is to undo what I done and I will scale this object down up to what I consider a correct dimension. When using the geometry nodes, it is not that necessary to apply the scale, but in this case I will do it anyways. And now, with that done, I can now re-add this face collection and see that the effect seems to have a correct scale. If we get this banana closer, we can see that the water drops have the size that they should and the effect is much lighter as well. Then it's just a matter of just playing with the sliders. So I will just create a render view here, move it like so, maybe there it is. And now I will select again my geometry nose object and I will start playing with the density for example. I will disable the selection in the render mode. I can change the ratio, like so, changing the amount of the big particles. 
adding some randomness and we can see that the effect starts being created and gets reflected in this render view. I will disable the static water drops and enable the moving ones so I have a better performance while previewing and you can see that the effect is created almost in real time. I will play a little bit with the density. The more density I, I add, the more computer power I will need. And I will add in this case the banana in this collection. So you can see that the instant that I add this object into that collection, the effect is created from there. Now I will reduce a bit the density because it is a little bit too much. And what is important to highlight is that these effects depend on the object orientation. So if I rotate it like so, the effect will adapt to this new orientation and it will change its output. Now once I happy with this moving water drops, I will enable the static ones again. And now another thing to keep in mind is that there is an option here that we call show base collection. What is actually happening here is that this object that spawns the effect is only creating the water drops. So if I turn off this collection, I will see that the water drops can be isolated. And what I can do is to keep this on or use this option that says show base collection. In some of the effects, it creates an instance of this collection and in others, it creates a duplicate. This is due to technical reasons. So in some cases, it is a good option to turn this off and enable this option here, but you can keep your collection on and just keep it this way. Now, regarding the material that we are given in this asset collection, what you will need to know is that the geometry node, as we previously said, already assigns our custom material and it can be changed from here. You can use whatever you want. And in case that you want to adjust it, you can go to the material tab and see that the object already has this material added. And this custom material has some parameters that you can adjust. For instance, the color, like so, the shadows, I will make a close up here. You will see that the moment that I increase this value, the shadows disappear and they get adjusted. I will turn this off and a transmission adjustment in this case, for example, if I turn this off, a uh, simple glass material is shown. And when I turn this on, a custom shader setup is the one that is used. This concept applies not only to these water drops, but to the different geometry nodes and the different materials that they use. The last thing that you should keep in mind is that when you are done with the effect and you don't want to preview it anymore, you should disable it from the viewport. That way you will be telling Blender to not compute this effect when you are working in your scene. So remember to turn this off and turn it on when you want to edit it. These would be the very basics of the geometry nodes and the different assets that are included in the Smart Weathering Pack. With this in mind, you can now check the different effects videos to better understand their key concepts. So, see you in the next video. Saludos.